In a recent interview with Japanese website 4Gamer, AMD's David Wang gave us a few interesting tidbits regarding the upcoming RDNA 4 GPUs. Rick Bergman, AMD's EVP of Computing and Graphics Business Group, also hinted that RDNA 4 might be coming sooner than expected. What can gamers expect from RDNA 4? What does AMD mean by near future for the RDNA 4 launch? Could the microarchitecture be launching this year already? Let's dive in. Today's video is sponsored by urcdkeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you could spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key from urcdkeys.com, a Windows 10 Pro key will cost you only $15 when you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and you can even get a free upgrade from Microsoft to Windows 11 if you wish. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased orders in the urcdkeys.com website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate and then on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, pasting the key you just purchased and click Next. That's it. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $60. URCD Keys is also having a spring sale with some cool affordable mechanical keyboards gaming mice and even chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. In this interview, AMD shared three interesting details that I think are relevant for us PC enthusiasts and can help us speculate a bit on what we can expect from RDNA 4. So there's the MDI Accelerator, the use of AI acceleration in games, and the release of RDNA 4 in the near future, whatever that means. Let's look at each one by one. The multi-draw indirect accelerator is already present in RDNA 3, and its purpose is to reduce the driver overhead on the CPU side. Indirect means that you move draw call setup tasks like culling from the CPU side to the GPU. This technique has been around for over 10 years now. The difference is that AMD has put hardware blocks that accelerate this process on the GPU. Both Nvidia and AMD have identified that their GPUs can render a lot more objects, but there's a bottleneck, the driver. Expensive API calls to the CPU will bottleneck the performance, leaving GPU resources unused or not fully utilized. So to make APIs more efficient, a bunch of processes have been standardized, like buffer storage and texture arrays, and also multi-draw indirect. Multi-draw indirect allows for faster submission of many draw calls. So to improve performance and have more stuff being rendered on screen, we have buffers that allows for faster streaming of dynamic geometry, arrays that pack 2D textures, and multi-draw indirect that allows for faster submission of many draw calls. Why is this so important to accelerate with specific hardware blocks? Well, having thousands of objects rendered on screen seems to be the way of the future, judging by techniques like Unreal Engine's Nanite or Mashlets. Working closely with Epic, I imagine that when games make use of Nanite to render all that stuff on screen, RDNA 3 and 4 based GPUs will be doing all those draw calls with this accelerator, massively reducing driver overhead. AMD's investment in into an advanced memory system and the synergy between their CPUs and GPUs will also compound into extra performance, for instance in sparse textures. Again, this is something that Unreal Engine does by arranging textures as tiles. So what David Wang was saying is that AMD is investing heavily into accelerating techniques that will be commonly used in Unreal Engine 5, especially with open world games with a lot of objects being drawn at once. Of course, with the success and hype around Unreal Engine's five incredible demos, the expectation is that other engines will employ similar techniques. So both open engines like Unity and in-house engines like Frostbite from DICE and Snowdrop from Ubisoft, to name just two, will be making use of such acceleration. Another interesting thing covered by Wang was the integration of AI accelerators into games that goes beyond just upscaling techniques like DLSS. Wang hinted at NPC behavior that will be defined by AI acceleration and something that I've covered before that's termed 
neural graphics. Neural graphics is basically a new type of asset that is fully generated by AI. So it's not quite a 3D object in the traditional sense, even though it will behave like one. If you've been following my channel, you'll know what this is, but I'll link to a few of my past videos on this if you are interested or need a refresher. Check the video description for those. While definitely a step in the right direction, it's going to take a while for games to start utilizing neural graphics, let alone having them accelerated by specific hardware blocks. But this has to start somewhere. The integration of AI acceleration by AMD here is basically to lay the foundations for something that we will only see in mass in a few years. And I can't wait to see the impact of the AI revolution in the gaming industry. I think we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. AI will usher in a whole new era in games graphics. AMD is making sure they are providing developers with the hardware tools to make that a reality. As I've been saying for years now, adding fixed function accelerators to CPUs and GPUs is the future, and we're seeing that being materialized here by AMD. So does that mean that AMD will have a massive advantage over Nvidia in Unreal Engine 5 games? I don't think so. Actually, Nvidia has patents in MDI going all the way back to 2012, and the work done in OpenGL for this was done in parallel, and even presented together by AMD and Nvidia all the way back in 2014. Both companies will have their own specific solutions, and I don't think Nvidia will be at any sort of disadvantage. It's just that AMD is talking about it now ahead of RDNA4's launch. The last detail out of this interview that's interesting comes from Rick Bergman, AMD's EVP of Computing and Graphics Business Group, who said that RDNA4 will improve on RDNA3's performance. It would be a shock if it didn't, but more importantly, that it will be coming in the near future. Now we can speculate on what he meant by near future, but it sounds to me that AMD is planning to release RDNA4 sooner than they had initially planned. RDNA3 is not selling, has received mostly negative reviews from the outlets that actually have any sort of integrity left, doesn't provide great value, doesn't come close to Nvidia's top SKU, and is plagued by issues be them driver-related or hardware bug-related, so launching RDNA 4 sooner makes a lot of sense. I think it's even possible that it will release this year still on TSMC's 3 nanometer. Recent reports say that Apple has significantly reduced its 3 nanometer orders from TSMC. It's been reported that Apple is the only significant client for TSMC's 3 nanometer this year, but if orders are cut, perhaps someone else can take advantage. A wafer for 3 nanometer devices has been estimated to cost around $20,000. AMD is paying around $16,000 per wafer for 5 nanometer based RDNA3 GPUs. If Apple is cutting their orders, perhaps TSMC can cut AMD a deal, and an RDNA4 based GPU could come to market towards the end of this year. The wafer allocation would be there, and perhaps the price increases won't be as bad as previously thought, if there's not enough interest from other TSMC customers. One can dream. So to conclude, AMD seems to be on the right track when it comes to adding features to their GPUs that will be relevant for future games and game engines, and it could be the case that RDNA 3's failure could push the company to release RDNA 4 much sooner than expected. I honestly hope that they don't rush it, I don't know if the company can handle another failure of the magnitude that RDNA 3 has become. Judging by how poorly AMD has been supporting the PC community, taking 3 months to release new drivers and then releasing bugged ones that can even corrupt Windows, I think RDNA RDNA 4 will have to be something truly special to get PC gamers to trust them again, and I imagine AMD are aware of this. Let's hope they don't screw it up. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By supporting my channel on Patreon, you will gain access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a welcoming community of tech enthusiasts. If you can't contribute at this time, then give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.